Go ahead and let your emotions come out a little bit tonight. Play as hard as you possibly can. A week of hugs, tears, and highlight reel dunks. But on top of that, Missouri Western basketball does something it hasn't done in five years. And it seems like five years a winter. Baseball and softball begin the thaw. Griffin Sports Insider on the ball, and it starts right now. Hello and welcome to GSI. Along with Brett Easley, I'm Ryan Menley. Brett, not too good uh, a week for the men's basketball team. It started well, and then it kind of floundered off. Yeah, kind of a tough ending, Ryan. Griffins go 1-1 one and one to end the homestand, leaving their postseason uh, hopes and doubt. Yeah, here's all that recap of the week that was. Wednesday, Western bringing the thunder down on Lincoln, and that's more literal than it should be. The Griffins shot 65% from the floor, dunking obviously a high percentage shot, and they did a lot of that. The Griffins had five players in double figures, led by Jonathan Phelps, who scored 22 points in 21 minutes of work. Ace Thomas had 18 points on 7 of 8 shooting, and the Griffins keep Lincoln winless in conference with a 94-72 victory. Saturday, senior night in the field house for four Griffin men. Western meeting Truman in a crucial game. A Griffin win all but clinches them a spot in the MIAA Conference Tournament. Bulldogs not a good record but coming out on fire. It opened the game on a 19-5 run but the Griffs come roaring back as usual. TJ Johnson, Levante Douglas working the pick and roll. It works out well. Douglas 14 points, 11 boards. Then it's Dewan Harris. No need for the pick. He'll just take flight. Big time dunk. Griffs down just 41-38 at halftime. Second half, they trail by as many as 13, but back they come. Jonathan Phelps steals the ball, and we've seen this a lot. The little guy in the big time jam. He had 17 points. Later, Phelps again in transition. He'll just stop and pop the three, and it is nothing but net. The Griffs would cut the lead to three, but poor free throw shooting would be Western's demise. They shot just 15 of 28 from the charity stripe. Meanwhile, Truman didn't miss much of anything. The Bulldogs upset the Griffins 91 to 79 in the final. Western must now win at least one of two games on the road to have a shot at the conference tourney. We just got to play. I mean, we got to come out in these next two road games. We're having home games. I mean, we should have won all these home games that we had at home, but we split. So, I mean, we just got to go on the road and split and get in the tournament. And joined now by Missouri Western men's basketball coach Tom Smith. Boy, you win two good home games last week, and then you're feeling really good. And then Truman comes to town, not a team that's very good, and they beat you. How do you feel about your team after that? Well, not good after after uh, Saturday night. You know, I think well, that was a that was a tough loss. I mean, I I, um, I don't know if I had a lot in my career, but uh, that one was pretty tough. I, I did not have a, a, a great Saturday night or Sunday. Uh, you know, in between. Uh, um, you know, or after that game, I think it was just a tough night. Didn't sleep real well, didn't feel good on Sunday. Um, but, you know, like anything else, you have to pick yourself back up and you have to play again. Let's look at the MIAA tournament scenarios now. Two to go, and there's there's a million scenarios out there. In fact, I think there's one there could be like a, a four-way tie for, for <laughs> six, or however you want to look at that. But, you know, there's a chance if the right things fall, and certainly we don't want to go into the tournament this way, but there's a chance we could go 0-2 this week and still make it. You really, there's a couple of different ways you could, and, and obviously if um, uh, Baptist goes into Northwest and loses on uh, on Wednesday, then uh, um, and then Northwest goes back in t on uh, Friday or uh, Saturday and loses to uh, Southern, which will be a tough you know game for them. Uh, we're in. I mean, you know, it doesn't make any difference. But on the other side of this is that we'd like to be playing at least decently and I don't think we felt that way leaving Saturday. First things first, you gotta go to Central Wednesday. <laughs> what do you tell your kids going into that game? I mean, how do you prepare them for that? Well, I think I think one of the things is, you know, get our uh, uh, our ego back a little bit, you know, I mean, uh, practice and, and start feeling a little bit better about yourself. I don't think we left the other night feeling very good about ourselves, so I think that's the first thing and I think, you know, secondly, you're catching a team playing pretty well and themselves because Central has had a number of home games in the second part of the season and they've capitalized on those those home games and got themselves up in that uh, probably fourth fifth spot um, I think one of the things we need to do is be able to rebound the ball a little bit better and certainly you know I don't know that we're gonna make our defense great in a week I don't think that but I think we need to concentrate better on our defense and certainly slow the game down a little bit and not get too wild up and down. I want to switch gears a little bit. You had senior night the other night, four <clears throat> seniors on the team, uh, three that have only been with you for a year, year and a half. Brandon Beck is, is the exception to that rule. He's been here for five years now, 
And uh, this kid came in as a project, a six, seven foot center basically, came in as a project and, and very raw and really kind of established himself into a starter this last year and really played some good quality minutes for you. I think he's, he, he should feel good about himself. I think that um, one, that he stuck it out for, for really five years of right. practice mm -hmm. and, and has gone through a, a lots of ups and downs. We've had you know, teams that were probably fun to be on. We probably have teams that have been tough to be on and Brandon survived that. And I think um, I'll always be thankful for that. He's losing prompt to you, ready? Absolutely. <laughs> good, good questions this week. They're always good questions, aren't they, guys? They are. Did you watch the NBA All-Star Game? No. Do you buy lottery tickets? Yes. Who? Have you ever won? Let me Have you ever won? I, yeah. I, I, I play, I are you the person that didn't the come forward? Three, four. It's okay. automatic because there's special numbers for us. Who's the, num who's the number one team in Division One men's college basketball right now? Um, Duke. And, and this would be a good answer from you, who's the best player you've ever coached? Mike Cornelius. Mike Cornelius. Early on in your tenure here at Western. Expand um, on that. Daryl Wright. <laughs> Are you changing your answer? Mike Cornelius and Daryl Wright. Okay. All right. <laughs> those two, those were early on. Well, good luck this week. Good luck this week. this week. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's Coach Tom Smith. We'll be right back. <laughs> the girls um, earlier and I was like this is such a sad moment but at the same time it's a huge game for us so we have to we have to stay focused and luckily we did I think we had a OD had to throw Rachel a towel before uh, we got introduced and stuff so she could clean up the tears but we did all right <laughs> really emotional just because you know we haven't had a senior any seniors since my freshman year so I feel like we've been the leaders of this team for three years so it's just been it was sad and just finally it was my final home game. Uh, it's definitely been a struggle the last couple of years and so it's really nice to be successful in my last year here and uh, get some wins and hopefully make some, uh, make some runs in the tournament. Emotional night for four Griffin seniors who after three seasons of struggles are finding success. Welcome back to GSI. Ryan Minley along with Brett Easley. Brett, good week for the Western women. Really good week. Griffin's back in the MIAA tournament for the first time in three years. That's after going 3-0 last week. They began with a win against Baptist Monday night. We'll let the highlights pick it up from there. Wednesday, Coach Plett, Max Griffin, and the Western women taking on Lincoln. This not much of a game. First half, Lauren Nolke, that's the three. Griff's up 35-21 at the break. Second half, watch the ball movement around the world. Five passes, all five players touch the ball. Alicia Bell finishes what she started. Later, Jessica Cook, she led the way with 20 points, five assists, four steals. Griff's by 20. Then it's Nolke. Her 193rd career three-pointer moves her to second all-time in school history as the Griff's destroy Lincoln 66 to 34 the final next up the home finale Saturday against Truman last home game take advantage I don't need to tell you you know what, what this is take advantage and make the most out of the opportunity that you have play with your emotions go ahead and let your emotions come out a little bit tonight play as hard as you possibly can no lack of emotion Saturday final home game for four Griffin seniors hugs and tears all around in pregame and that only made the in-game action better first half Brenna Celine great bullet pass to fellow senior Colleen Schneider Griff's up two early on just before the half four seconds on the clock quick inbound to senior Lauren Noki. Noki drains the corner three that gives the Griffs a 26 25 halftime lead the fans they approve second half more senior action on senior night Rachel Lutine gets her own miss and put back. She had 17 points, eight rebounds, five block shots, Western by six. Then Lutine draws the double team. Somebody's open. Callie Schoonover's that somebody. Part of a 22 to five Griffin run, meaning this game going out of reach. Jessica Cook blowing by purple jerseys. She had 15 points. Then Cook with the ridiculous bounce pass off the break to Noki, who gets the rare layup later. Noki's more at home doing what she does best. One of her five three pointers on the night. She had game by 19 points the seniors get the early exit treatment as western cruises 68 to 48 the final the win clinches a spot in the miaa tournament and clinches western's first official winning season since 2005 and we're joined now by head women's basketball coach lynn plett first of all coach what's more satisfying the miaa tournament birth or the winning season so far that's a toss-up. You know, it's both. And I thought we th if we had a winning season, we would get in the, in the tournament. So it's, they kind of go together, I guess, from that standpoint. But uh, the winning season is very gratifying so far. Well, then, uh, early in the week last week when we last talked, obviously on paper, we looked, you know, we had Lincoln coming to the field house and Truman coming to the field house. 
on paper, those look like winnable games, but we got to go out and take care of business. And I certainly think we did that. Yeah, I thought I thought the, the defensively, I thought we played really three solid games all in the last three home games and uh, held our opponents to a, a fairly low shooting percentage, which to me is the biggest reflection on how, what kind of defense you're playing. And, and especially in the second half of both ball games, I thought we did a really good job of, of holding our opponents down. Lynn, one of the trends on the homestand, and even back to the Fort Hayes State game, we, we've tended to get off to a little bit of a slow start, maybe not so much on the defensive end, but on the offensive end. And then in the second half, I've really kind of gotten in the rhythm, and, and points have seemed to come easier in the second half. I guess two-part question, is there a reason for that, and does that concern you going forward? You know, the reason for it could be that the, I think there's a little bit more energy in the first half on the opponent's side on defense, and as the game wears on, they may get a little tired and a little bit more fatigued and so I think it's a little easier for us sometimes. Well, especially if we can push the ball up and down the floor and get them tired. Um, as far as it, uh, whether it's a concern, as long as we don't bury ourselves and get too far behind in the first half, uh, I think we're okay. Well, we talked about, you know, Alicia Bell's good, Jessica Cook's good, Rachel Lutine's so much improved, and really over the last six games, Lauren Noki is shooting about as good as anybody in the world. Six games, about 33 pointers, uh, that's that's a good clip, and just talk a little bit more about her. It, it, part of me doesn't want to say much about it because then everybody's, everybody's going to pick up on that. <laughs> I don't know what's in the water she's <laughs> right. drinking, but whatever it is. But, but no, she's just, uh, you know, she's been a different mindset, you know, for most of the year, and that is that she's developed a little bit more of a shooter's mentality of not worrying about the pass shot whether it went in or not and just keep shooting and and you can just see even her release is quicker uh, if, you, if you know it like the last the play we drew up right at the end of the half on Saturday with four seconds to go on an inbounds play she just came off the pick and rolled over there and caught it and just squared up and shot the ball and went in uh, that's been a different Lauren Nolke from from my standpoint oh you're in the MIAA tournament you got a week of regular season games to go we'll talk about all of that when GSI comes back Basketball. 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 It's a dance. Forty minutes. Forty minutes. Forty minutes of pure emotion. It's a great time. Great time. Great time. Great time. It's a great time. It's a great time to be a Griffin. And welcome back to GSI, joined by head women's basketball coach Lynn Plett. Coach, MIAA tournament is next week. you got two regular season games. We'll talk about that in a minute. But now you've got a chance, basically, to be as high anywhere from, from eighth to fifth in this conference tournament. Talk about that motivation now. Does that change the motivation going into this final week? It affects it, I think, to some degree, although uh, I, think, I think we've been pretty focused on just having the best overall season record that we possibly can and right now we're shooting for 16 and 10. Is there somebody you'd rather play in the conference tournament and looking at the matchups? Certainly coaches always kind of dodge that question and say, oh, it doesn't matter. But you know what? I think Ryan and I agree. I think it does matter. But I, I just want to hear your opinion. Is there somebody you'd rather play or somebody you think we match up better against than somebody else? Well, part of that is is on my own feelings about it. And so personally, I'd, I'd like to play Southern. And largely not so much because uh, how we match up with them, but because we've lost to them twice and to get another shot at them. And, and the other team is, would love to get another shot at Northwest. Um, so, which would probably mean that we'll be playing well into the tournament that way too. So, because Northwest is going to be at a, one of the top seeds, if not the top seed. Well, speaking of teams you want to get another shot at, again, we go on the road twice and we play Wednesday night against Central mm -hmm. Missouri. And Central Missouri came into the field house, you, boy, you think back way back on January 15th, and we were riding high at that time. We'd just come off a good road win. And that kind of started a, a, a stretch where we didn't play very well. Just talk about what's going to take to beat the Jennies Wednesday night yeah, in it Warrensburg. Yeah, it was our, I think it was our first home loss. Yes, and so was. there's a little uh, motivation there for us as well, I think, from that standpoint. We probably don't match up as well with them uh, to some de degree, that, as well as we do with some other teams. But uh, on the other hand, I think there are some things that we can do to compensate for what we didn't do against them down here when they played us down here. So we just need to be a little bit more aggressive and, and play a little bit more like we have in the last three or four ball games, like you said. I, th I don't know if we had a, a slide so much that we weren't playing, but we just lost some close games and close games on the road. 
Um, so I think we've got a little bit of that confidence back now. And then Saturday you go on the road to Southwest Baptist, team you really just played last week and, and handled pretty, pretty well. Uh, just talk about that team, playing them, and how important it's going to be to finish this regular season with a win going into the conference tournament. I think so, and I think especially um, if we can do it on the road. Uh, the way the schedule has been, we've played North, uh, Southwest Baptist the last game of almost every season that I've been here. And they've, they heard us. One year they knocked us out of the tournament right. uh, down there. So it's not going to be an easy place to play. It'll be senior night for them as well. So there'll be a lot of emotions on their side. And uh, we, we need to play as well as we possibly can. And, and I know it's going to be a night where we're going to really have to defend a three-point shot well because they're, they're not afraid to shoot the three. And we'll have to do a good job of that down there. Lynn Plett, congratulations on the success so far. Get it done but the rest before of the we let you go, we've got Easley's impromptu. That's right, Easley's impromptu. How could I forget Unbelievable. that? Unbelievable. How could I forget that? How Ryan Minley trying it? to cut me off Well, again. he just simple told questions. me he didn't want you to ask it. Uh, that's simple, true. Qu yeah. simple questions this week. Did you watch the NBA All-Star Game? I did not. Next two of us. Did you, did you buy lottery tickets? No. Who's the best team in Division One men's college basketball, considering almost everyone in the top ten lost last week? Who's the number one team right now? In my mind? Mm -hmm. I'd say Kansas. Finally, this is at any level, anywhere, and we, we're probably not going to know who this person is. Who's the best player you've ever coached? Uh, Angie Hupfer as a girl I had when I was at St. Joe's, who was uh, Division II Player of the Year, averaged her junior year, averaged 32.3 points a game and 11.6 rebounds and shot 52% from the field. Hmm. So Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good there. You can let him go now, Ryan. St. Joe's, not to be confused with St. Joe's of Missouri and Missouri Western. Right, yes. right. All right, Lynn Plett now. Good luck this week. Thank you. Congratulations. Let's finish strong, and we'll look forward to Kansas City. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll be right back. The GSI rolls on for the last week of February. Western softball rolls into the season in style. The Griffins own a 4-2 record after opening shop in the Southeast Oklahoma Invitational. Tony Dance hit two home runs on the first day. Brittany Douglas hit two home runs and a walk-off on the second day. And freshman pitcher Jackie Bishop went 3-0 for the weekend. Solid performances Woo! by individuals. But Coach Jen Bagley says oh, there's still work to be done. As a team, we would have felt a lot better boarding that bus yesterday with a 5-1 and one record from the weekend. But, um, you know, I think a lot of bright spots happened this weekend. We, um, we played some really tight ball games and came out ahead. And I think that when your team shows each other that they can do that, I think that's a really powerful and tangible that you can stay in the fight and come out on top. Baseball, meanwhile, went 0-3 on opening weekend. The Griffins dropped three games at North Alabama, but really no reason to be concerned. Well, it's because North Alabama's really good. They're 9-1 on the season. Coach Buzz Verdusco says he got some things ironed out in the opening weekend. You know, you want to do a little bit of damage control. I mean, because, you know, psychologically, you kind of go, wow, you know, we're facing a regional-type team, and, and statistically, we didn't match up um, in any category. Um, the three to one game was about as good a contest that we played all weekend. Um, but I think heading into this coming weekend, I think being outside against a very good opponent, I think that's going to that's going to help us. Griffin baseball will play its first ever home series in the spring sports complex this Saturday and Sunday against Nebraska Kearney. Of course, that's weather permitting. Well, weather doesn't affect Griffin tennis. They're pretty adaptable. Pretty adaptable. Griffin's opened their season indoors last week with a loss to nationally ranked Northeastern State out of Oklahoma. Ron Selkirk's team, very young. Four freshmen make up the eight-player squad. You know, I thought our girls performed very well. Um, we were anxious to see what we were going to do when we actually played a match. And um, I think the girls were a little disappointed because I think some of them thought they could have done just a little bit better than they did. And I don't think the scores were necessarily indicative of how hard they played. I think it's, it's going in the right direction. We have a lot of girls on the team that are very strong. We have a lot of potential this year, um, a lot of new girls coming in. We have a really young team, so a lot of freshmen, um, sophomores on the team. And that really goes to our advantage because we can build. It's a building year. I think what we're trying to do is climb the ladder, and we're just trying to move ourselves up that ladder a little bit and get more competitive with the teams that are at the top of the conference and the teams that are in the middle of the conference. Finally, huge honor for one of our own. Mike Halloran was recently inducted into the Missouri Amateur Softball Association Hall of Fame. Mike is the current director of athletic facilities at Western, but in a previous life, he was St. Joseph's Parks and Rec supervisor. During his tenure, St. Joseph played host to 37 state championships, five regional championships, and eight national championships. That's good enough to get you the high honor. And to be included, uh, at least in that list, or be considered and then accepted into the Hall of Fame, 
Uh, it was really, really special because I've seen a lot of unbelievable people uh, that have come before me and, and been recognized in the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, it was, it was a really special weekend and a uh, really, really special honor. Alan Ryan, no accident. When you're inducted into a Hall of Fame, it, it's certainly deserving. Honor. Yeah, you've done something very deserving. He was with St. Joseph Parks and Rec for 21 years, hosted a lot of championships. Very deserving. We're happy to have him. Yeah, happy to have him. Glad, glad we're with him. Yes, I'll be right back. Welcome back to GSI. Look who's coming to dinner. Nice, nice headdress. I like it. Don't don't you? It looks great. I don't get to wear it. You know it what very it is often. better than? It's better than the still of it when you're not here. You yeah, finally it is. won. I get to wear it and you're here in real life, and I am here. You Take know? a good picture, then, and folks. It may not happen. The again. only reason I beat you last week is because I picked against you. We were one different. I picked against you. It was a Washburn sweep, and I. I you yeah, know what? I, I really won. felt like Washburn would sweep those games. I'm just all about helping other people. I wanted to yeah, help you win. I just was trying to be different. Being different's good. Let's get to the Pickums this week to see if Easley can win the Coke back. MIAA basketball final regular week of the season. Nebraska Omaha at Missouri Southern. Southern women roll against you. And no, that's a good men's matchup. I think Missouri Southern wins that. They had a really nice win last Saturday in Hayes. Give me Southern. Southern sweep at home. Take a Southern sweep as well. Emporia State at Washburn, the big rivalry game. What's up with the Emporia women? They're really struggling. Give me the Washburn women. Give me a Washburn sweep. Washburn men starting to play well again. That's a Washburn sweep. Take a Turnpike Washburn, tussle. Washburn sweep as well in the Turnpike Tussle. Fort Hayes at Pittsburgh State. Another Kansas matchup. Another Kansas matchup. Give me the uh, Pitt women at home in John Lance Arena. And I'll take the Hayes men over the Pittman. Really? I'll have to take the same thing. I don't like us being the same. Truman and Lincoln. Is there going to have any tickets left for that matchup at Jason Jim? <laughs> all 12 people. All, all, no, that I'm, was no, terrible. All I kidding, all kidding aside, I shouldn't have said that. Give yeah. me the Truman women. Give me the Truman men, too. Truman men played like they did Saturday night. They'll, they'll win that game at Jason Jim. Give me the Truman women and the Lincoln men getting their first conference win. Southwest Baptist at Northwest. That's a Northwest Missouri State sweep, and I, I think it's a pretty easy sweep seeing how the Baptist teams are playing. I will agree with the same thing as well. MIAA tournament starts next week in Kansas City. Missouri Western women are in. The men are trying to get in. Brett, you can get tickets. Get tickets. You need to buy them from us. we got a ticket minimum we must meet, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're going to Kansas City, come on out. They'll be available through March 2nd in our ticket office, 271-441. Or come see us in person, Looney Complex, room 229. And history made this weekend, possibly weather permitting, with Griffin Baseball at home the first time ever on Saturday. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, forecast right now looks a little chilly, but who knows? Boy, it takes some 70 degree weather like we had last weekend, but uh, come on out. First time baseball's on campus in the program's 41 year history. We'll have a two or three first pitch ceremonies and uh, hopefully get, uh, get, get baseball's first wins this weekend and as well. Admission is free as well. Absolutely. That is GSI for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here next week. And as always, go Griffs, folks. Go Griffs.